In a previous video, we looked at the request mapping annotation in Spring Boot. In this video, we are going to look at some hands-on examples of that, and we're also going to see how we can test out some of our endpoints by using a really handy tool called Postman. Postman is a tool that belongs in just about any developer's toolbox. I put it next to your favorite IDE, Notepad++, a good screen capture tool, is one of the things that you just need to have to do a good job as a developer. Postman is really handy because it allows us to set certain parameters on a URL or on a request to a URL that we wouldn't normally be able to set in a browser, at least not very easily. So I just go to getpostman.com and I'm going to go ahead and choose download the app. While that's downloading, I'm going to run back to my development environment. I'm going to make sure that my service is running, so I'm going to right click on my Spring Boot application class and choose Debug As Java Application. We'll give this just a moment to load. We see now in just five seconds it's up and running. I'll run back and just confirm that we can hit our start page. Sure enough, when I hit refresh, I notice that Eclipse highlights an orange indicating that the debugger has been engaged. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Eclipse and then choose F8 to tell it to continue. And I run back to my browser and I see sure enough that Welcome to Plant Places is responding. So I'm going to grab this URL and I'm going to choose copy. Let's go check in on our download of Postman. And it looks like I have a little more work to do because I have to tell it that I want Postman for Windows. So I go ahead and choose download. We'll give it just a moment. We'll select the link once it's downloaded and choose open. And as you might expect, a uh, fairly straightforward way to install this would just need to fill in the blanks. Now it likes us to sign in. I'll go ahead and sign in with uh, Google. Now with my sign in complete, I come to this welcome screen and I can choose request and request name. We can just say uh, test start with get method. Something like that. Okay, and we'll save this to the, let's say, plant places tests, just like so. Looks like I misspelled it just a bit. Tests. And so we'll create a collection, plant places tests, and save to plant places tests. There we go. Okay, now test start with get method. This is the test that I've set up. Notice here we have some methods. We have get, post, put, patch, delete, copy, head, options, link, so on and so forth. These might look a little bit familiar. Indeed, these are the HTT methods, or at least uh, a larger group of HTT methods, some of which we use to map to the simple CRUD operations that we want to exhibit in our microservice. If we take a look at our application, you'll see that we have a request mapping and we have not yet specified an HTTP operation. So let's go ahead and just test this out with get and then in a moment we can try a few other uh, different protocols as well. So this is essentially what I've just done in the browser. I just want to show that I can replicate this with Postman. Now one note here, uh, the server, the browser, and Postman are all working on the same machine so I'm using a simple localhost address. If you're running Postman from a different machine you'll want to put in the destination machine, in other, words, in other words, the server's IP address or the server's host name here. So let's go ahead and choose Git, and then we're going to hit Send. And notice that just like before, Eclipse lights up in orange, indicating that I have indeed hit this breakpoint. And just like accessing this application from a browser, I can now access it from Postman. So I choose F8 and we continue. Now Postman is going to send me the response that it received, which in this case is the raw HTML. Uh, naturally, HTML is, is meant for a browser, and this is handy if you want to just verify that, okay, I am getting a good response. You can see here the status 200 OK. 200 indicates that this is a web request that was OK, that uh, succeeded as expected, where uh, 500, 404, 400, 402, each of these mean different things, and they have very important meanings in the world of microservices. How much time did it take? How many milliseconds? And then what was the size in bytes? You see, this is a fairly small response, so no surprise there. It's a, it's a fairly compact response. Now, I'm going to change this to post, and I'm going to hit send. And if we take a look, we see that the exact same method 
the breakpoint hits on the exact same method. So post get, no matter what we're doing, it's going to hit this request mapping called start. We also know that we can discriminate based on the method that was used to uh, send information to us. We can use the long form or where in the request mapping annotation we use a method equals, or we can use the short way where we just use the add symbol and get mapping and post mapping. Let's do one of each. Let's take our existing method and add method equals request method get, and then let's make a separate, separate one for post, which we're going to call post mapping. So I'm going to expand my editor window in Eclipse, and after the existing start, I'm going to place a comma and then just say method equals request method dot get. Note that this is a constant, not a, it's a string under the covers, but it's a constant here, so we don't need to put this in quotes. Now, note that we have a comma after our start, which used to say, hey, we're mapping to the endpoint that begins with slash start. Since we now have two different values in this request mapping, let's add a name to this first one. We'll say value equals start. So now we essentially have two different name value pairs here. Value equals start and method equals request method get. So value, remember, that's kind of what you would see in the URL. That is essentially the endpoint that we're mapping to. Method is the HTT protocol that we're listening to. So now that I've added the qualifier for request method get, the breakpoint we have on line 16 will only get hit if we're accessing slash start with the get method. If we're using post, trace, uh, delete, update, whatever else, this method will not be called. That's kind of handy because you can essentially use this method as a discriminator to say, I'm going to take all create operations and I'm going to push them uh, into, say, post. I'm going to take all update operations and I'm going to map them to some kind of update operation. Any kind of read operation I'll map to a git. So you can have different methods handle each of the principal CRUD operations just like we see them mapped in this HTTP methods here. Now naturally you might be itching here because we have method equals request method git and there's a red line there so let's figure out what we need to do to remedy this red line. So I'll tell you what I can click I can do control one or I can click and import request method. Yeah, that's fine. And now we're all good. Now I mentioned we were going to make a separate method to handle post. We know that get tends to be a read operation and post tends to be a create operation in CRUD lingo. So why don't I make a new uh, method? We'll say public string create. Method name can be anything. As a matter of fact, we might change this later. And I'm going to say return start again. And now instead of request mapping, I'm going to say at post mapping. And then we'll just say a uh, double quote slash start like so. Uh, of course, we get a red line here. So I click and import post mapping just like so. Save. Everything compiles. I'm going to go ahead and terminate our running session. But now we see that we have this endpoint slash start mapped two different ways. One way for get methods and the other way for post methods, both of them mapping to the same endpoint. So really this method called start, we could say read because that would be our read operation here. Let's go ahead and change that for clarity, uh, just like so, and save. Now with that saved, I'm going to, I've already terminated the service, so I'm going to run back to Java EE view. I'm going to right click on plant places application, and I'm going to choose debug as, and then Java application. Now I already have a breakpoint on the Git, uh, let me go ahead and try and put a breakpoint on post as well. So we'll put one on line 23, and this can give us a little idea of is our postman working as we expect. So let's go ahead and try this with get. Same URL as before, but we're trying it with get, and I hit send. Okay, I see Eclipse is lit up orange, which of course is good news. Uh, let's switch to the debug perspective and take a look as I expand our editor window here, notice that line 18 is where the breakpoint stopped. That's because we're accessing the slash start endpoint. Again, you can look up here and see slash start. Uh, and additionally, uh, if you see the get word here, and then we come back here, you see get over here. All of that matches up, and I press F8. Let's go back and let's try this again, but we'll try it with post. So I go to post, and our success criteria here is that the breakpoint on line 18 should not light up, but instead the breakpoint on line 23 should light up. So I go back and I hit send, and I do see that Eclipse is flashing orange, which is good news. 
let's see where we are. Ah, take a look at that. Sure enough, line 23 is lighting up here, so I can say F8. And we're returning the same data either way, but you notice now that a get or a read operation goes to one method, where a post or a uh, create a new record operation goes to a completely different method, even if the URL is the same. So we can continue to do this. We can do this with, uh, with several of these other methods. And once again, we know the shortcut that we can use based on the HTTP method. So get mapping, post mapping, put mapping, delete method, mapping, patch mapping. All these are things we can use. That's a good start because now we are choosing method based on both endpoint and also HTTP method. There are several other ways that we can that we can decide which method which method in a Java class or a controller class will handle this response. So we'll cover that in an advanced video, which will follow this video. But nonetheless, this is a quick look at how to use Postman to test out our endpoints using essentially any service. But in this case, it happens to be Spring Boot. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.